Ты че? Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Intercontinental Park Lane for a, a very big day, not just for Luke Campbell and Matchroom, but also for British boxing. I think we've finally got a real chance to have a real crossover superstar here in Luke Campbell, and we're absolutely ecstatic to join him to the ever-growing Matchroom team. Luke and I have had a number of discussions over the last few weeks, and uh, everything's been extremely positive. Uh, I know he's taken his time, he's spoken to a lot of people, and He's impressed me not just with his ability, which we know he has, the, the most successful amateur fighter that the GB team has ever produced, and of course, already an MBE through that gold medal victory. But also his determination, his popularity in Hull, which I must say is beyond anything I've ever seen in any city since the likes of Ricky Hatton. We're gonna grow Luke Campbell all over the country, but the journey will begin for us on July the 6th or the 13th in Hull, with a huge outdoor event like no other for someone turning professional. He's uh, told me of his audacious plans and having been to Hull and seen the response um, from the people and from, from the community up there, I'm not even sure we're gonna have a venue big enough for the likes of the KC Stadium with 18 to 20,000. The bill will be built up around Luke Campbell for a very special night of boxing with a number of Hull fighters as well. We've already confirmed Tommy Coyle will fight Derry Matthews um, for the Commonwealth lightweight title and also having just spoken to Kel Brook it looks like he may make his return on that bill as well. I'm going to pass over to Luke Campbell, I know he's got a few words um, and obviously we'll, we'll break for questions and one-on-ones but to say a few words and new, new signing, gold medalist, MBE, Luke Campbell. <coughs> Thank you for that Eddie. Um, you know, it's, um, I'm overwhelmed to be a part of Match Room. You know, I'm very excited about our journey together and where we can go. Um, you know, I've been an amateur boxer now, boxing for Great Britain now for the last 13 years. Uh, won medals at, at every national uh, major elite tournament. So now it's you know I've had a bit of time out after the Olympics. You know, as obviously everybody knows I did dance on ice. You know, give me time to rest my body, rest my mind and you know the passion and the hunger now that, that bends inside me for, for this new journey, you know, the professional route. You know, I know it's gonna to be tough, but you know, I've got, I've got the best team around me and you know I'm confident we can go all the way together. Thanks guys. Uh, before we break to one on ones, any questions from the floor? So what weight do you think you're gonna sort of settle at? <laughs> what weight, sorry? Yes. I mean, you start starting at the or No, you know, I let my body rest. Um, I've naturally put on a bit of weight and, and muscle. Feel very good and strong at it. I'm, I'm probably weighing. I'm still talking in kilos here, by the way, not pounds or stone. Um, so I'm, I'm probably weighing around about 63 and a half kilo. Um, you know, so I'll probably get into the ring and, and just see, see what I'm good at, see what I'm comfortable at. Um, but I, I would probably say super feather or lightweight. Have you done much training since the uh, Olympics? You know what, I've never stopped training. You know, it's, um, I, I had maybe five weeks off after the games and then I was back in the gym just ticking over. You know, not not um, trying to do anything but just ticking over. Because obviously it's a sport that I thrive to be the best at. And you know, champions never rest. They never stop training. You know, they, they're always, you know, they eat, they eat and live a healthy life and that's what you got to do to be the best. So I've always really kept my eye in, but now it's the last four weeks, you know, it's been, been 100% and back to, back to my normal ways. A great number of people in Hull play live with you as an ice skater, but is your ice skating career now over? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely over for me, the, the ice skating. You know, it's um, during that time, it's... It, you know, I really had good, a good chance to, to rest and, and realise you know, what I'm good at and where I want to be and where I want to go and what my desire and passion is and that's boxing. You know, I, I love to entertain the fans and, and um, you know, put on a great show. Will you still be training in the hall and will you still be at some halls? You know, I'm not sure yet. I'm, I'm like a, a free bird at the minute. I'm, I'm here, there and everywhere training in different gyms. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still learning, you know, I might be Olympic champion, um, but, you know, I've still got lots to learn. 
You know, every time I go into the gym, I'll, you know, like a, a sponge, I want to soak everything up as, as much as possible, take everything in, uh, and be better than I was yesterday. You know? So I'm here, there, and everywhere at the moment. So I am now and again. Okay, good. And Eddie, KC Stadium, is that where you're looking to uh, situate this fight? Yeah, we're talking to the KC Stadium and Craven Park at the moment. Obviously, the KC is the primary choice, no disrespect to Craven Park, but it is a, a tremendous stadium. Um, we're up there tomorrow with Sky Sports looking at various opportunities and speaking to Dr. Alam. They do have the problem, problem of relaying the pitch at the KC Stadium, which is definitely an obstacle. Um, so it's up to Dr. Alam and, and uh, you know whoever in charge there to see if they want the show. But we see a huge response already from Hull and, and a big outdoor event with the likes of Tommy Cole, Derry Matthews, Kel Brook, Samir Mamouna against Lee Selby and of course Luke headlining the show. So um, we want the biggest capacity prop as possible and obviously that's KC Stadium but you know, we'd have no problem going to Craven Park which would hold probably between ten and 12,000. Not Brisbane Road then? Sorry? Not Brisbane Road then? No, no, no. I think uh, you know, whether it will be at the KI ground or whether it will be at KC Stadium, I think the fans there are just going to bring an electric atmosphere and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a night to remember. And again, you know, it's a chance. This has never been done before for a professional debut, so it's a chance where the city and the boxing fans can actually make history on worldwide news and on doing a, a massive outdoor event, you know, for, for someone's pro debut. So I'm, I'm excited. You know, I'm, I'm training hard, and uh, you know, I'll put the best show possible in the ring. I've never seen a response, you know, obviously from the city. I mean. When he went back with his gold medal, they had around 20,000 there to, to cheer him on, and uh, the Christmas lights when it was pouring down with rain, 10,000 10, or so. And, and being there tomorrow at the City Hall for people to see the start of the journey as well. Um, but seeing people in Hull get behind him, and the great thing that Dancing on Ice has brought him, which you know I've ribbed him about particularly, but it's brought him such a diverse following. You know, and when you go to Hull, you see that. You know, from young children to grandmas to middle-aged men to young men, everyone wants to be part of the journey, and that encourages me so much. Not just for Luke Campbell, but also for the sport of boxing, because I don't believe we've had a fighter like this um, who's had that diverse appeal. So that makes it particularly exciting for us. I'll have to get some of the uh, vests and clothes back I borrowed you from Dan so nice. So. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah. That's what he's been pestering me about. <laughs> Do you think the Olympic experience added to you as a fighter and a person? I think I learned a lot from the Olympics experience. It was, you know, it was the first time of going out there. You had so much pressure on your shoulders, and you was boxing in front of ten thousand people. You know that that all was there for you, cheering for you. Um, you know, and there was I seen a couple of boxers and the way they reacted to it. You know, and it, it could easily be over ten where you could let the pressure and you could let the the audience and the fans get to it, but I I went in there with, with a man frame. You know what will be will be. I've trained as hard as I can. Um, I'm the best shape I'm in. So you know whatever happens will happen. As long as I go out there and give it 100%, I'm happy with that. But I use the fans for my benefit. You know every time they cheered, you know that 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 raised my game a little bit. Every time I threw a punch and they cheered, I, I you know I was non-stop throwing punches because I just wanted them to keep. You know, to keep cheering for me. So, you know, to handle that type of pressure, especially it being in your own city, well, yeah, yeah, in your own country, um, you know, it was it was tough. But, you know, I went out there, I enjoyed it because, you know, was, let's not get it wrong, I do boxing because I love it. You know, and I enjoy it. So that's what I try to show in my performances as well. And you know, there were some tough fights, and I enjoyed the experience. I learned a lot from it. And it's you know, little experiences like that. Will will help me in the pro career of you know how to handle the the fans and the audience and you know whatever else that comes with it you know it's one day at a time that's how I look at things. Eddie, I imagine have some stiff competition for Lucy this so. Yeah, I mean um, one thing that we we never do, and I think Luke will agree, is, is hound fighters. I you know I never made an approach to any Olympian. They know where we are, and and you know fate will find us. And we we spoke at shows and stuff like that, but. As we advise all of them, go and speak to everybody. And you know, Luke, not sure did speak to everybody, but spoke to a number of other promoters. And um, I think the key for us is building uh, Luke Campbell in in this country, obviously, and and in Hull. And obviously, our platform with Sky Sports will enable us to to build him as a fighter and as a personality. And I think again, you know, the reason that we push so hard at the end to sign Luke Campbell is because 
if we're going to grow this sport, we need people like Luke Campbell who can reach out to other markets and can diversify into other audiences. And there's just not that many fighters at the moment that can do that. And Luke Campbell is one of them because of the base he's got from his gold medal and because of the other stuff he's done in between. Um, Leisha, his agent, has done a great job and we're working closely with her to make sure that he stays in those other genres and, and you know appeals to those other markets because I think at this show you'll see the audience there, how diverse it will be. It won't be your 18 to 35 year old males just having a great time and singing and having a beer. It will be families, it will be older ladies, it will be you know group, groups of, of friends coming together who have no interest in boxing. We've already seen on his Twitter, I, people, I have no interest in boxing but I will be there. You know, and for us as a promoter and someone who wants to build the game, once we get them there, we give them a great night and a great card and then maybe they will become boxing fans in the end. Luke, was Matrimony the only real option for you? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I had a, you know, there was a, there was a lot of options out there, but you know, I felt for me, Matron was was the best. You know, the, you know, if I wanted to get anywhere in boxing, I knew there was the guys that would take me to the top. Um, you know, I love the passion as well, what what they're showing the fighters. Um, so yeah, there was only really one option for me in the end, and that was with Eddie and, and Matron. He didn't tell me that at the time. No, obviously not. I had a game plan, yeah. as you do. <laughs> There's obviously options as well, staying amateur now, quite different to what was what, what was it that made you decide to turn professional now? You know, again, it's, um, I've been boxing since I was 13 years old, and, you know, since I was 15, I've been boxing for Great Britain. You know, I've been boxing the best in every country for the last decade, and again, I've been to every single major tournament there is, win winning the Europeans, world silver medal, you know, Olympic gold and all the other tournaments in between that I've got gold at and, and so on. So, you know, my time, I think, has, has come to a great end in the amateur career. You know, now I want to see what I'm made of and what I'm capable of in the professional side of things. You know, there's, there's nothing else for me to, to do in the amateurs because I feel as though I've done everything that I can possibly do. And I want to be what I can be, what I was in the amateurs, in the professional game. You know, so it's, it's a new leaf, it's, you know, it's a new chapter and uh, I'm ready for it, I'm hungry, and I just can't wait to get back in that ring. When was the decision made? Was it coming straight after the gold medal? Did you know before the Olympics that, that was the ring? I've always sort of known that I wanted to, to be a professional fighter. Um, you know, but obviously after the Olympics, it was time to, you know, the longest I've ever had out of boxing was two weeks in like 13 years. So, you know, having, Five weeks off and a couple of months off after the Olympic Games, it you know, gave me a chance to rest my body, look at a few different things, and I've always wanted to be world champion as a professional boxer. Um, but the amateur career was that stepping stone. It was the experience, you know, boxing around the world in Russia, you know, Germany, everywhere around the world. I've boxed and boxed tough, tough hard opponents. All then was was learning curves for me for, for this real game now, which is obviously the professional ranks. All right, guys, thank you very much. We're going to have some photos and then we'll be available for one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks very much. And we'll be in Hull tomorrow, 2 p.m. at the City Hall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.